Hi, Promise. It's April Biss. I just wanted to give you some feedback on your submission here. Um, for some reason, I don't have this font, but I'm going to go through here and give you some suggestions um, so that you can push this forward. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and double click on your body copy. I'm going to keep this to basically what you have. Just I'm going to change it to Baskerville because I have that as a font. So I'm going to click OK just so that orange goes away. And that should go away. I don't know why it's not going away. Okay, that's probably because you didn't have it set as your body copy. Okay, so make sure that you are, oh, you have this intro copy. Let's see here. You have it as Gil Sands. Okay. Let's do that Gil Sands. There we go. Perfect. So you kind of see it. Take this space out here right before that. Let's face it. There's an extra space there. And then go ahead and once you do that, you'll see that this line needs to bump up. So let's go ahead and pull that bounding box up. So that pulls it up. And then I would just pull this down a little bit, pull everything down just a little bit. Maybe try centering your headline in your, um, for your articles. I think that would probably align really well. You just have to make sure you're you just have to make sure that your, um, why am I not seeing this in your preview? Hold on one second. Where's my margin? You don't have margins and columns set up. Do you Let's see? Yes, you do. It's not showing though. That's really weird. Um, let's go back to preview. Let's go to normal. Unless I'm not seeing it in here. Huh. Do you have white in the background? No. That's really weird. Um, I'm not sure why we're not seeing your margins here. Let's see. Oops, sorry about that. Let's go to view grids and guides. Oh, show guides. That's why. It's show guides. There we go. Yay. So show guides. Um, so just make sure the your text box is centered on your margins. Sorry about that phone call. And then we're going to set the bleed. So go file document setup. We're going to go to bleeds. And we're going to put 0.5 and hit this little link. So it sets all the top, bottom, inside, outside, 0.5. And then this will allow you to set your bleed. So just pull out anything that's going to bleed towards the edge. You're going to bleed that off the page. So what happens is when it goes printing on press, if you were not to have your bleed set, it's going to have a, it could have a white gap showing. So you really want to make sure that you have this set to your bleeds. If you have any bleeds, I would put no fill here. None. And then I would do object fitting, fill pr frame proportionally. You can kind of play around with how you want to see the image in the background, but just make sure that you are uh, bleeding that off. Now, if you wanna see more of this edge, take your uh, white arrow, your direct selection tool, click off of it, click back on. And what you're gonna do is you're just gonna adjust this so it's a little longer on the bottom. Okay, and what we could do here is, pull this down. We're going to have to set another point here because this isn't going to work. So uh, with that being said, we're going to do the pen tool and just click the add anchor tool. So if you hold down your uh, selection over the pen tool, you can see there's a plus add anchor. Go ahead and select that and you're going to add an anchor right here. So when you add that anchor on now, you could take your direct selection tool and pull it all the way up to this corner. So you have that bleed available. So I'll show you here real quick. Let me, I'm gonna take the stroke off. You don't need a stroke here. Take the stroke off. Zero. So when I go to preview without the bleed, say it's trimmed, that's what it's gonna look, okay? So you can kind of adjust that, you know, if you want it to go up to a point like you had it, you can adjust it here, you know, kind of make it how you want it. But you definitely need a bleed there. All right, the next thing is your heading. You don't want to put stroke on any type because it makes the letter look different and harder to read. 
So go ahead and double click over top. Oh, it looks like it, it changed it here. So whatever font that you use, let's go ahead and get it bigger again. And just make it sure that it's bigger than your subhead or your headline of your article here. Click OK. And then I'm going to break it right after newsletter. And then I'm going to center the box onto your margins here. Drop this down so we can see that extra word. What you could do is you can make that all caps completely up to you. Um, I would definitely, you know, adjust the line spacing. So actually, let's go to your, your um, let's do all caps here, which is under your basic character settings, and then bring this up. That'll just give it a nice, I'm going to track it out a little bit you know, a nice breathable font here, but it, it gives it kind of an interesting look. Okay, so that is the headline of your of your newsletter. So that should be up here. This should be closer to your copy. So we're gonna bring this down a little bit along with your, your headline. Here we go. So think about proximity, you know, you're, you're placing those um, elements together for a reason. We had to actually change that. There we go. Um, the headline of the art article shouldn't be all capital letters. So what we're going to do is we're going to make a new paragraph style and we're going to name this article heading. So we don't get it confused with the heading of the, the magazine. And we're going to do normal. And that switched, that was actually like that before, but it switched because we had two, two, I had changed this, which was connected to that style. So just make sure that's not all capitalized. That looks good. Okay. And then what you're going to do is click on your body copy, get rid of this space in front of meeting. There's like two spaces there. Um, body copy. Let's go ahead and double click on that. What do we got going on here? We want Baskerville. Um, let's try 10 points by 14. That'll give you some room there. So 10 point size and dense and spacing. That's perfect. Um, I think that looks good. And then your intro copy, I would just kind of make this the same as your body copy. Why is this acting weird? I'm going to do a select all and we're going to we're going to change this again. This looks good. And it's in spacing. Black looks good. Why is this changing? That's really weird. Hmm. Let's take that out. I'm just going to take a look at all your stuff here. Do a little I'm gonna clear all. There we go. So what I did there was I just hit option click. I'm sorry, not option, control click. And I kind of ignored everything. I kind of cleared it out. So we're starting from scratch. Okay. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select the subhead. I'm gonna create a new paragraph style. We're gonna name this subhead. And let's do that lobster style because you had it in your heading. And okay, let's cancel that. And I'm not going to click on that right away. So just create a new style, but don't click on uh, the actual type yet. So we're going to name this again, subheads. Lobster. And we can make this just a little bit bigger. I'll do 14 auto. We can actually make this a character, you know, color, click OK. And then when you're ready to assign it, go ahead and click <clears throat> select your subheads. And you're going to go ahead and drag it and select that. Now, we don't want the indents there, so we're going to take that off. We'll go back into your um, style guide to do that. And then just go ahead and go through here and, you know, make your subheads 
delete any weird spacings that you see here, but make your subheads be assigned to your subhead style, paragraph style. Um, the other thing that I noticed is your baselines are not aligning. So that means, you know, if I pull a line here and, you know, check to see in all of your columns, are all the baselines aligning? They are not. So you want to make sure they're aligning. So go ahead and double click on body copy again. And we want to go down to indents and spacing, align to grid. You want to do all lines. And you'll notice it spaces it out too much, right? But if you go back to your character spacings, you're letting it set to 14. So all we need to do is set the, and click OK. Um, all we need to do, actually, let me go back. Let me set this again. Indents and spacing, all lines, click OK is uh, click OK, go up to InDesign Preferences and go to Grids. I showed this in the lecture and change your increment to every 14 points and that will kind of adjust it. Now all of your lines will align in every single paragraph here. So it's kind of nice. I'm going to bring that down a little bit. Um, just kind of pay attention to bad orphans like this. I would drag this down if that's happening. I see a space here that needs to be deleted right before meeting. Actually, no, that's good. Just need to pull this down a little bit so it connects. Perfect. And then I would just pull all of this here down. We don't want this copy to be affected as far as um, baselines aligning. So go ahead and double click on intro copy, go to indents and spaces. And we're going to say none for that align to grid because that's a special little paragraph. We're not using a ton of copy for that. And I'm going to go ahead and shift return that so it's a nice break. You know, anything anything in here that you see, like for instance, this is a widow, we wanna get rid of that. Let's turn extra space here, yeah. So what I would do is put your cursor in front of specific and do a soft return here. So shift return. You could kind of do a shift return in front of that too. See how kind of nicely, it's like a nice rag now. And then go to your other page. Everything looks good there. The only thing I would suggest here is just bleeding off all of these elements off this page. Your pink line, your image as well. Looks like your image is being, make sure the image is the same size as your box here. So just pull this in, object fitting, fill frame proportionately. And then just go ahead and bleed this off. This doesn't have to have a stroke. So go to zero for that, pull that to your bleed so that you don't have any weird white gaps happening. And this is where you can massage this part because you do have a lot of space here. I probably would leave it though. I'm gonna pull this down so it's not so big um, because what we're you're gonna do is you're gonna be, you're gonna end up putting a table of contents in here. So it's gonna bump everything down here anyway, but you have a nice space to have that centered in there. But I'm gonna show you what it looks like without the trim or actually without the bleed. Okay, so that looks pretty good. We have space here, so that's good because once again, like once you put in your table contents, it's gonna bump everything in there. Um, it, this kind of looks a little weird up here. I'm gonna put like another color here, maybe not. Let's see, let's get rid of the stroke. Maybe just like a nice black color, just a nice separation. Kind of a nice uh, element here. There we go. It's a nice, it's like kind of weighting this down. That looks good. Okay. The only other issue I see is you're not doing the page numbers correct. Remember, we need to do this on the parent pages. So go ahead and delete that and go back to your pages. Click on your parent page up here. See, it says a parent, double click on that. And you'll need to set your pages here. And I did this in the demo again. So take your type tool and drag it out. Go up to uh, type, insert special character, markers, current page number. And then you could do the newsletter design. Let's see like a tab right there. Let's copy that, paste it over here. Now I'm on the right page. So we want the page number to be on this side. Let's 
So we're going to right align this. My paragraph style. Copy. Just make sure you could put a tab in here. That's what we might have to do. Um, oh, we don't want, we want, no, we actually go back. Make sure you don't have it set to subheads. We're going to go make a new paragraph style. We're going to name this page numbers. And then that you can actually change the uh, type, I'm gonna go to 10 points. I think that looks good. Um, you know, 12 is kind of a bigger, um, you know, a bigger point size. We don't really need it to be that big. All right, so what we could do here is we could do page numbers right, left, and then page number right, we can create a new style for. Oops, I can spell. And here, what we're going to do is we're going to do just like a little. Let's see what I'm going to do here. Okay. Actually, we're going to do a right tab right here, right where the, see where it's kind of moving right at the almost three and a half mark right there. Perfect. And then we're also going to do another one right here. One, two point seven five. Like, okay, you're putting tabs in there. So now, um, we're gonna set the indents and spacing to right, right align. Let's delete that. Oops. Let's delete that space in between here. We don't need that. Okay. And yeah, let me fix my tabs in here. Let's see, let's do it here, three. And then take your cursor and put it right in front of newsletter and hit tab, and that should tab it back. Okay, once you do that, save it and go back to your um, pages and you'll see that page number footer being applied. The only thing you won't see is if, if you have an element here, it goes over, you won't see it. So let's bring that up. You can see it here now and, and uh page three and it goes on based on which page number. So go back, make these changes. You're gonna be adding in, like I said, a table of contents. So once you add that table of contents, make sure it has a text wrap. Say this is your table of contents. Let's see, colors, which is, let me just make this black with no stroke. And let's do a text wrap. Okay, I put a text wrap on it. That way nothing's getting in the way of that. And you'll see how this will bump it down here. And then you can kind of adjust it. Okay, you can kind of center this box now. But this, let's say this is your, um, just to say this is your table of contents. This is where your type would be. Maybe not necessarily black here. You can kind of adjust the, the, the color and all that good stuff, but make sure you're insetting your type so it's not hitting on the sides. You want a nice margin of, of space to cushion it, but uh, make these changes and then you can go forward to your other pages.